Google just released the first beta version of Android Q and you want to know everything about what this delicious unknown dessert update has to offer. Don't worry, I got you. However, before I begin with the big changes first, I just dropped my new line of merch for Android. So if you're interested in a stylish hoodie, jogger, or t-shirt, check out howtoman.shop. Anyways, in Android, the navigation gestures are going to be improved. Thanks to a recent article by XDA, I was able to manually enable these new gestures using ADB to show you how they work in the first Android Q beta. First off, the back key is gone. So to go back, you just swipe the pill to the left. Swiping the pill to the right will let you switch back and forth between the two most recently used apps with new animation. It looks very similar to the iOS transition. Swiping down on the pill will bring down the notification panel. Long pressing anywhere on the nav bar and swiping left or right will let you cycle through your recents menu and everything else is the same. Tapping the pill will let you jump to the homepage and long pressing it will bring up Google Assistant. Full system dark theming has been expanded and improved drastically. Before an Android Pie on the Pixel 3, the background used to be a darkish gray color and now the background is pitch black. Perfect for AMOLED displays to save battery. And a lot of things have been themed when dark mode is enabled, including the settings, notifications, finally. Quick settings panel, Google Discover on the homepage even though I couldn't get it to show any of the cards, and the launcher. By the way, even though there will be a toggle in the final release, this current beta doesn't include one, so to manually enable dark mode, you have to have it enabled before you flash Android Q, turn on battery saver, which is the easiest option, or manually enable it on or off using ADB, which is the method that I used. Before I show off even more amazing features, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Dashlane is a great way to keep your digital life secured. It's a password manager that can store your passwords so you don't forget them, generate unlimited amounts of passwords, supports autofill for both your apps and websites so you never have to type in your login, sign up, or credit card information ever again. They even have a browser extension which also automatically signs you into accounts or fills out personal information. And because Dashlane works on every device and cross syncs your information, You'll be able to access your passwords, IDs, payment methods, and more anywhere, anytime. However, don't get it twisted. Dashlane isn't just a password manager. It also lets you know when an account you have saved in Dashlane gets exposed in a breach. They will send you an alert so you can change your password and keep your account secured. The app is also equipped with a VPN to keep your internet activity private. And it can scan your emails to find any accounts that you've created in the past so you can also store them. Overall, Dashlane is extremely secure and trusted by over 10 million users in 150 countries. So give Dashlane a shot by using my personal link, dashlane.com slash howtomen. And the first 200 users who use my code howtomen can get a 10% discount when purchasing a Dashlane premium account. So hurry. Another big change is that the share menu is getting a facelift. For now, the menu displays away exactly as being shared for text and links along with a clipboard button. Google is also introducing a new sharing shortcuts mechanism, which also allows specific apps to set targets ahead of time. And right below that is a list of all your usual apps. In a future release, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more changes, so stay tuned. The app info page looks a bit different and has some extra small features. First off, the info page now shows you the number of notifications you get from the app in a given day for each category as well. For redesigns, the app icon is now centered and there are extra icons for three buttons. One of them is open, so you can finally launch apps from within this page. For system apps, the disable button text has been replaced with uninstall and enable has been replaced with install. It still just disables any system apps, don't get confused by the wording, but now when you quote unquote uninstall a system app, it won't automatically uninstall the updates. So for those who want to save a bit of extra space, you can still uninstall the updates through the three dot menu in the right corner. Moving on to the notifications panel, notifications can only be dismissed by swiping left. No longer can you dismiss a notification by swiping it to the right. Instead, you just get snooze and management controls. Along with swiping right on the notification, you can also bring up management controls by long pressing any notification. There are now three new buttons instead of two. Block will completely stop the app from showing notifications in a specific category. Show silently will stop the app from showing banners for new incoming notifications. And alert me does exactly what the title implies. A neat little feature in the quick settings shade is that you can now see how long your phone thinks your battery will last. When playing music or having a YouTube video play in the background, the notification now has a new icon which lets you quickly pick whether you want to play the audio through a phone speaker or a connected Bluetooth device. The only way to have this option pop up is by enabling a feature within the developer options in the settings. So in the developer options, look for feature flags and enable the flag title settings underscore seamless underscore transfer. When you receive a new notification, a tiny bell will show up for the first 30 seconds to let you know that it's the latest received notification. It's very useful for when you receive multiple notifications in quick succession, one after the other. And when you completely disable an app from sending you any type of notification, you can find those apps in the settings, 
apps and notifications, notifications, see all from last seven days, then tap the drop down menu and change it to turned off. And here you will see a list of apps with disabled notifications. Moving on to something more exciting, theming controls has been expanded from just switching between dark and light mode. In the developer options all the way at the bottom, I cannot change the accent color, the font, and the icon shape. And not only will the icon shape affect the icons on the home screen, but it will also affect the folders and the tiles in the quick settings. Since we're on the topic of customization, when you remove an icon or widget from the Pixel Launcher and didn't mean to do that, you can undo that removal. I've never seen any third party launcher do this, so props to Google for thinking outside the box. I've also never seen screenshots with rounded corners and a notch. Google has done that, and there's no option to disable the extra contents. Why? Uh, the only thing I can think of is to let people know what device you have when you share a screenshot. However, I'm very doubtful that Google will leave this unchanged or not give us an option to disable this in the settings. Another exciting feature is freeform windows. It allows apps to run in resizable windows. This feature isn't anything new, but before it was disabled by default and you had to use ADB or a third party app to use it. Now it's much easier to enable. Just go into the developer options, scroll down till you see enable freeform windows and force activities to be resizable and enable both those options. Restart your device and there is now a new freeform button that appears when you tap on an app's icon in the recent menu. At the moment, this feature is pretty buggy, but it's still great to get a glance at how this will work in the future. By the way, I'm well aware that Samsung has had this feature for years. Sharing Wi-Fi passwords has never been easier with automatically generated QR codes in the Wi-Fi settings. Scanning this QR code will allow anyone to join the Wi-Fi, and before it brings up the code, the person has to confirm the password or touch the fingerprint sensor. There's also a button to bring up the camera to scan the QR code in the same spot where a person needs to type the password. System permissions now give you more control to protect your privacy. One of the more prominent changes is that you have the option of approving location access only when an app is in use. Therefore, if you don't want an app to access your location in the background, you can stop it from doing so. Another permission improvement has to do with the old apps that still rely on old APIs. If I install an old app such as AC Screen Recorder and open it for the first time, I'll get a screen that allows me to toggle off certain permissions before the app even runs. From a privacy standpoint, it's a really good idea, especially if you're dealing with old sketchy apps. Lastly, if you set an app to be your default phone app, messages, email client, or browser, you're probably tired of having to grant it necessary permissions for it to work on your phone since you most likely trust the app already. Well, with Android Q, apps that are set as default will automatically grant permissions based on what they are defaulted for. For example, if I set the Google Dialer as a default phone app, I no longer need to grant it permission to access my call logs, camera, contacts, microphone, phone, or SMS because Google will automatically grant it access. Saves you like five to 10 seconds, good job. <laughs> the Files app has gone in a material design overhaul. The downloads folder lets you filter the files at the top. There's new animations, icons, and a few more good looking objects. Last year in the betas of Android Pie, Google introduced feature flags in the developer options, and these toggles were extremely experimental features with some not even working. Android Q has used the same menu but changed the entire list to new options. Here are a couple that I found to be useful or interesting. The first flag that I wanted to talk about is settings underscore screen record underscore long press. When enabled, this flag will give you native screen recording. Just go to the power menu, long press screenshot, and tap start recording, and then tap start now. It'll begin to record your screen and you can stop the recording by pressing stop, pause, or cancel in the notification shade. However, when I try to stop it, the screen just locks itself and doesn't stop the recording or the system UI just crashes. Some people say it works on their Android Q device. Me, I got nowhere. Just wanted to let you know that it's there though. This flag slightly changed the animation when going in and out of the always on display depending on the wallpaper. If you want the power menu to be dropped down to the bottom of the phone for better one-handed use, then enable this flag. If you want to randomize your MAC address each time you connect to a different Wi-Fi network, enable this flag. There are a few more flag features that are still unknown, but I'll leave a link down below to a 9 to 5 Google article where they will still update that post with new flag features that they figure out. Those are the main changes within Android Q Beta 1. Now I'm going to do a speed run of all the smaller Android Q changes. Battery saver cannot be enabled based on your routine. It's hard to say how useful this will be for a person who charges their phone randomly throughout the day but I think it's a great feature for those who charge their phone in a trackable pattern, such as charging the phone only at night. When you download something off the browser, such as an APK, there's no longer a whole new page just to download an app. Instead, there's a new dialog menu. There's a new animation when you open an app. In the recents menu, the apps to the left and right fade a little. The always on display as the currently playing song underneath the clock. The battery icon has been moved to the top right corner and the next calendar event shows up towards the bottom. 
The lush green background gets blurred with the album cover of a currently playing song in the background. Perfect if the album cover is not safe for work, but I do still think Google should allow the user to choose whether or not the album cover should be blurred or not. There's haptic feedback now when you move the cursor across various letters. The vibration is pretty satisfying. There are two extra accessibility options called time to read and time to take action, both of which allow you to configure just how long certain messages stay on the screen. Couldn't seem to get it to work, so just keep your eyes on these features. And lastly, Android Q now supports native desktop mode. However, to try out this feature, you need to have Android Studio installed, and I didn't want to go through the hassle just to show off a pretty buggy and broken feature. So for now, I'll just show you the screenshots from XDA. Now I'm going to talk about possible features that you can expect from Android Q. According to the Android developers website, Android Q in a future update within Windown mode in digital well-being may allow individual apps to be set to display in grayscale, meaning you can customize what apps get enabled in grayscale and what apps don't. For now, Grayscale just makes everything black and white. With foldable phones soon to be arriving to the market, Google is preparing to better support these foldable screens, so app developers can make their apps compatible with these new screen types. Android Q also supports a special file format for photos with depth information, which allow photo editing apps to better take control of the background of a picture and possibly change the bokeh effect. And last but not least, Android Q will prevent background apps from reading your clipboard data for privacy reasons, causing popular apps like Clipper and Native Clipboard Manager to become useless. As of right now, the Android Q beta program is available to join for anyone with a Pixel device. However, I wouldn't recommend it because literally 50% of my apps or more don't work and it's not stable yet. I did it because my Pixel 3 isn't my primary device and so you wouldn't have to. I'll drop a link down below for those brave souls who still want to experience these new changes for themselves. Either way, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of Andrew Q. Make sure to check out my new merch, which I just dropped. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!